In Climate Watch now, we mentioned earlier that rare tornado that carved a path of destruction outside of Seattle yesterday. The tornado knocked down power lines and trees and lifted some debris at least 6,000 feet in the air. Now, at least 50 buildings were damaged or destroyed. Locals reacted to the shock and surprise of the unusual weather event. I mean, it was a sight. I was running for my life, man. I didn't know where to go. My friend was at the door, holding the door shut, and I'm, I hit the floor. So joining me now to talk about that tornado and why we just seem to be experiencing more to tornadoes and increasing intensity overall is CBS News contributing meteorologist Jeff Berardelli. Morning. Jeff, good morning. So, I mean, I don't recall ever reporting on a tornado like that outside of Seattle. How rare is that? It's extremely rare. Yeah. On average, uh, Washington State gets only about two and a half tornadoes a year. So that's fairly incredible. And uh, usually only one out of every 10 years produces a tornado in the state of Washington. So it's pretty rare, but it, it would happen this year. And the reason why it would happen this year is most of the Pacific Ocean is very warm right now. It's in an El Nino like state, but it's not a typical El Nino. And so it's having slightly even stranger impacts than a regular El Nino would have. So yeah. the West is getting slammed by storm after storm after storm. And so one of those storms is bound to produce a tornado. And this one seems like a big one. They're going to go out and survey it today. Mm -hmm. So not exactly sure how strong it was yet, but I've looked at many tornadoes in my life. Looks like probably an EF2 with winds around 120, 130 okay, I mean, miles an hour. That's strong for that area. EF0, small tornadoes, more typical for that area. Okay, yeah, well, it certainly looks pretty bad based on the damage that we're seeing. Um, so you've been looking at a study because it's one thing to say, oh, we cover these news stories and yeah. some of the weather definitely seems out of the ordinary. But you've actually been looking at a study that's indicating that climate change may be contributing to what we think we're seeing, which is more intense storms. It's possible. So it wouldn't really apply to this particular tornado in Washington, mm -hmm. but to tornadoes where they typically happen, Tornado Alley or, or the Deep Southeast. Uh, it seems as though in this new study that's come out from uh, James Elner, he's a doctor down at uh, Florida State University, mm -hmm. saying that tornadoes are becoming 5.5% more powerful f per year. That's very fast. That's not nominal. 5.5% per year more powerful. That means in terms of power, their strength, um, how wide they are, how, how, how long they are on the ground, and when you combine all of that, yeah. uh, they seem to be getting more powerful. And I, I would think that's significant, too, because, you know, say, if you live in Tornado Alley, I yeah. mean, buildings are built to withstand yeah. what's expected to be coming. Right. But if that's the true. expectation is changing so rapidly, how do you even catch up? I mean, what does this mean for people who live in these areas? Well, so this is what he finds. He finds that a combination of, of warmth and humidity increasing, uh, probably near the Gulf states, uh, at the same time is perhaps wind shear, so the jet stream is changing a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, there's a concept called the wavier jet stream in climate change. Uh, and basically what it means is the jet stream is becoming maybe slightly weaker and it's able to have more undulations. And those more undulations are causing more erratic winds in the upper atmosphere. So when you combine that with uh, perhaps more warmth out of the Gulf of Mexico, more heat, more humidity, and this wavier jet stream, climate change could very well be causing the possibility of extra strength tornadoes or more powerful uh, tornadoes. Mm -hmm. and, and so what that means for places, especially in the southeast, because we also know there was a report recently, a re research report on this, that the whole tornado zone seems to be shifting a little bit towards the southeast. This could all be climate change or it could all be natural oscillations, uh, decadal oscillations in the Pacific and the Atlantic. It's tough to know because right. we have to look at a longer record to right. know for sure. I want to quickly talk to you about another study. Yeah. This might be just for weather nerds, but I think it's sort of fascinating. Definitely for weather there's nerds. New, there's a new study I'm one of those people. <laughs> that indicates that tornadoes may be sort of mm -hmm. formed from the bottom up and not from the top down because yes. you think of a storm coming right. from above, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Jana Hauser is a PhD and she did a study with her team on this and they used uh, this rapid scanning mobile Doppler radar uh, to look at the atmosphere very quickly. National Weather Service radars look at the at the atmosphere every two and a half to four or five minutes or so. She's able to look at every 15 to 30 seconds mm -hmm. and by looking at it she can see where the rotation happens first. She did about four or five cases of this and she found in every case it either appeared first on the ground or it appeared simultaneously uh, through the whole column. And the reason why it's kind of um, an illusion to you, it seems as though the tornado is coming down from the cloud. Yeah. The reason is, is the tornado is visible before you can see it. There's a spinning column of air that whole time. You don't see it unless it picks up debris from the ground right. or it starts to drag down the condensation from the cloud down the funnel. 
it's actually an illusion. The funnel's been there the whole time. It's just that it condenses further and further south or further and further down in the right. column as time goes on. So yeah, it, they probably occur both ways, mm -hmm. but it seems like it's more likely that it may actually come from the ground. And I know that's, that's an odd one, but it's an interesting one. That is really yeah. fascinating. Jeff, thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure.